We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. If we are crashing down again. Pieces of love, it's all right. Scattered in mud, it's all right. You give me. Welcome back to Zabertooth Pottery. It's been a while. So if you're just stopping by to finally see what I'm posting and what I'm talking about, welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. I've had a lot of stuff going on in my life lately, so I just haven't had the time to make videos and I just I've had you know, I just have a lot of stuff going on and I needed to focus on that. But also, I've had some good things going on like I got a new kitten. We've had a lot of stuff going on here in California. That's where I live. We've had the fires going on. And of course, everybody's dealing with the pandemic. Um, but I take care of a 96 year old lady when I'm not making pottery or playing with my cats. So uh, that's been like a full time job. It's really stressful. And, you know, things have just been kind of rough. So, but I felt like making the video today, I felt like having fun, hence the extra crazy makeup that I've got going on right now. Um, obviously this is not my hair, this is a wig, <laughs> but I felt like having fun. So here, here we are with the purple hair and the purple eyes. So, but anyways, <clears throat> today's video is about lidded jars. I did say in our last video, we were going to be making lidded jars. So we're finally actually going to do that. If you're getting to this video because you have watched my previous videos, by now you should know all the techniques on how to get to the jar phase. You should know how to build a cylinder, throw your clay, all of that stuff. Today what we're gonna be going over is how to make the actual jar flange. That's the part that the lid sits on and then the lid itself. Now there's several different ways. There's many different ways that you can make a flange and a jar lid, but I'm just going to go over a few of them today. So you can either do the ones that I'm doing in my video. Um, just watch so that you know that you, you kind of get an idea when you go and make your jar or you can do one of the other jars, lids and flange combos that I'm going to put a little picture of so you can kind of see some of the different things that you can do with the flange and the jar lid. So here we have a nifty little image I found online of the different types of jar flanges and lid combinations. On the first top row from one to three, you have your basic jar flange, the most common types um, that people typically throw. On the second row from four to six, um, these are more commonly used for making urns. And on the bottom row, these are more common for making teapots. Uh, number eight and number nine typically are what I will throw to make teapots. And numbers uh, one and two are typically the type of flange and lid combos that I like to make for my jars. And I don't typically make urn type jars. So um, that's just a style preference. And if you want to do that, here's a picture of them. Um, I'm just going to do the basic urn a flange and lid today and I'm also just going to do your generic jar and then I'm also going to do the one that we would ideally make when making a teapot because pretty soon here we're going to be making teapot. So if you have all your tools and you're all ready and set to go, let's get started. So first things first, as usual, make your cylinder and then get it to the shape that you want your jar to be. It can be any shape. The most important part is just getting the flange where it needs to be. Here I'm using my chamois to kind of get the shape that I want. And I'm using my fingers to kind of pull up that shape, make sure it's nice and straight and flat on top because I am making a flange uh, for an urn where the jar goes on the outside of the flange. So I want to make sure that the flange has a spot for the jar to sit. So I'm pushing down right here just gently to kind of make that little foundation for the jar lid. And then I'm going to clean it up and make sure that it's a nice L shape so that you have a flat flange and then the wall of the flange where the jar will be coming down on is also straight. And you just do that until you get the shape that you want. Um, you just pinch it kind of like you're bringing up the clay wall and that's how you get your shape there. 
just always make sure to clean it up so that it's nice and smooth and it's nice and flat and it's nice and level. You can also use any of your really flat tools like this one here to make a nice super clean and sharp edge if you're not getting it as sharp as you'd like. When you're done, just clean up your bottom and cut it off and set it aside to work on later when you're ready to trim. When you're ready to make your lid, section off a small bit of clay and form it into a thick, flat bowl. Use your calipers to measure the flange on the jar body and make sure that the small flat bowl is large enough to fit over the flange on your jar. You're gonna have to do this a couple times until you finally get it the right width. Once it's the right width, leave a nice thick part on the bottom, kind of like a foot. Um, it doesn't matter how big it is, just make sure it's bigger than it is smaller because you're going to need to use that to make your handle for your lid. For our next lid and flange, we're going to be making um, the lid and flange that we would be making if this were a teapot. However, this is just going to be a jar, but I wanted to show you the lid and flange for making our teapot because that is going to be one of our ne next projects and you're going to want to know that. So I'm making another lip for this jar, kind of like I did with our last one, only I'm trying to make sure that the lip here is thicker because we're going to use the wooden knife tool to cut it in half. So you want to make sure you have enough clay so when you cut it in half, it's even on both sides. So you just gently press down right in the middle of the lip here. Um, you only have to go about a centimeter deep. Then I add a little bit of water to make the knife tool run a bit smoothly and I use the back end, the flat end of the knife tool and gently turn the inner part of this lip that we made down. You don't want to push down, that's really important. Don't push down, just guide it with the knife. You turn the knife and it will gently flatten that part right there. And this is going to be the flange where our jar lid is going to sit. Then you can use your chamois or any of your preferred tools to clean up that edge. Gently just line up the chamois with the lip of the flange to get that sh to keep that shape. You don't have to squeeze, and then clean up the bottom and take your pot off the wheel. Just like before, uh, with your lid, you're going to want to make another really thick, flat, small bowl. And you're going to use your calipers again to measure the inside of the flange this time. And you want to cut with your knife tool in the middle like you did with your flange, but instead of pushing the inside down, we're going to be pushing the outside down so that it fits right on the lip right there. Then you want to make sure that the ring on the inside of the lid jar is not going to be too big that it won't go inside the teapot. So you have to measure both the outside and the inside rings to make sure they fit just right. You also want to make sure that you throw the body and the lid at the same time because clay shrinks as it dries so if you threw the body first and then you threw the lid later the next day after the body has shrunk you're going to throw the lid the wrong size and it's going to end up being too small once it shrinks and dries. And again, lastly, be sure to leave a relatively thick foot on the bottom of your lid because this is going to be trimmed later to make the handle for your jar lid. All right, so here we have our two different types of jars. We have over here our, our flange and our lid that we'll be using for our teapots. 
in our next video. Um, over here we have the urn type lid and flange. For this one, as you can see, this is gonna be fitting over the outside and sitting on the outside. So the flange is on the outside on this one. Over here, the flange is on the inside and our lid has this extra little circle right here, this extra rim. And what that purpose of that serves, when you have a teapot, you tip it. And so if we didn't have this extra bit here on the lid of the jar, the, the jar lid could slide off. And so for teapots, that's really important. If we went ahead and did our jar like we, I had planned, um, we would have the uh, lid, it, you wouldn't have to have the circular part here and you can have the flange like this, or you don't have the circular part and you have the flange. So because that, because when you have a jar, the tipping part doesn't matter. So you don't need either the flange or the ring. It's whatever you prefer. But for the teapot, it's really essential that you have the flange and this extra ring on the lid here so that the lid is not sliding around when you're tipping the teapot. On this one, it's really simple. Um, we don't, I don't do this one much. It's not a favorite of mine. Um, but it does look really good when it's done because the lid, um, lines up seamlessly with the jar. So a lot of people do like that. I don't personally, it's just kind of, it's not one of my favorite lids to make, but it looks really good. So the flange is on the outside of the jar here and this will just go right over it. And this keeps it from sliding around this part right here. So hopefully by the end of this video, the making a flange and making a lid makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it can be difficult and this is going to be kind of one of your fu first functional pieces that has more than one component to making your, your, your clay body. In our next video, we're going to be making teacup sets because pretty soon we're going to be making our teapots. So now you're gonna know how to make your lids, which is important for making teapots. And next we're gonna be making teacups, which of course is important for any tea set. So I'll see you in the next video. If you liked today's video, don't forget to click like and subscribe and we will see you soon. Bye. Um, if you got into this video or you're just watching this video because Okay. I don't like talking. I, do I look insane? I look insane. I can't tell. I've got contacts on and everything is a blur. And so... But I'm having fun, so that's what matters. <laughs> okay, let's go make jars. <laughs> Bye! Mwah. We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. If we are crashing down again. Pieces of love, it's all right. Scattered in mud, it's all right. You're giving me a